New York City courts see more than 320,000 new criminal cases each year, with defendants charged from everything from smoking pot to shooting someone. And every week, about 1,000 cases end up with a judge setting bail. The accused can stay free before trial if they put up cash or a bond. In just under half of those cases, the bail never gets paid. Even bails lower than $500 keep thousands of people behind bars. Bail is a practice that's been around since ancient times, but is now seen as a problem that Mayor de Blasio and his city council allies want to address. They're setting up a pretrial supervision program to get people to show up for court without forcing them to pay up front. Here to discuss that initiative, its promise and potential pitfalls, are City Limits reporter Wendy Davis. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Marika Meese, the legal director for the Bronx Defenders. Welcome, Marika. Welcome. Thanks for having me. And Michelle Eskenazi, CEO of Empire Bail Bonds. Thank you all very much Thank for being you. here. Thank you. For those of us who are uninitiated, Michelle, uh, who've never uh, had to post bail, never pay post it for a relative, what is the bail system? What's the purpose of it? How does it work? Well, the purpose of bail is to ensure uh, an offender's future appearance in court, simply and only. And New York State, um, unlike the fallacy, has a 6 percent filed premium rate. What so, does that mean? It means that um, when someone comes in, for example, on a $10,000 bail bond, people are under the you know, estimation that it would cost $1,000, but actually here in New York it costs $860. And so, Rico, what is the critique of the current bail system? The mayor and the council have both put forward proposals to address problems. What's the problem they're addressing? Well, I think there are really two problems. The first is the assumption that it is money that gets people to come back to court. And um, I don't think that's proven to be true. If you look at the actual studies and the data that's been collected by various places, one of which is the Criminal Justice Agency, which is tasked with having a research department that actually looks at all of the data for the 350,000 people that come through being prosecuted each year. And that data shows that people come back to court when they're released with no bail whatsoever, the same as if they are released for money bail. So there's no correlation between money being an incentive for people to return. Turn. The second problem is that judges are setting bail that people cannot make, whether it's $1,000 or $500. As you said, more than half of those people are not ever able to pay that until their case is resolved. And that's a fundamental flaw in not utilizing the statute the way it was intended. Bail is supposed to have people release and get them to come to court. It's not supposed to keep them in jail. There should be a presumption of release. Judges should be setting the least restrictive, restrictive means. And also, our statute actually requires that judges take into account a person's financial resources when setting bail. But they aren't doing that. And they aren't utilizing the non-financial forms of bail in our statute like an unsecured bond, which is simply a promise to pay. That's been in the statute, and almost no judges use this form of bail. So some folks are kept in jail prior to the disposition of their case because they can't afford bail or for whatever reason. And, and so what? What impact does that have on them, on the justice system? Why does that matter? Well, even just a night or two nights in jail can completely disrupt a person's life. It can. A lot of the people that come through the criminal justice system are in communities that are already over-policed. People that are low-income people of color might be working two or three jobs, juggling to support families. Spending a night or two in jail can put your job at risk, your housing at risk, can have um, ACS come in to try to take children away. It can be an incredibly disruptive, um, both for people and the loved ones that they support. So it has a huge impact. And these are people for whom there's been no determination of guilt. They're presumed innocent, and yet they're being held in jail um, simply for lack of finances. So let's bring Wendy in. What is the mayor proposing that we do about this? So um, this proposal it aims to give judges that are inclined to set bail in a case an alternative. And the idea is that to give judges the alternative of, instead of setting bail, to order um, a pretrial release program, supervision, supervised release program. It's only going to be available for people who are charged with misdemeanors or nonviolent felonies. And um, the idea is to take these people and assign them to a slot in a, a supervised program. Um, that way, they could um, stay out to fight the case avoid the disruption to their lives, and um, continue you know, to make their court dates without having to wait in Rikers Island. Um, one of the big issues is that when people do wait in Rikers Island, because they can't make bail, 
they often end up pleading guilty um, quickly, very early in the case, just to get out. As part of a guilty plea deal is that they'll be able to be released um, with a sentence of time served or some other sentence that gets them out of jail that day, but they have to plead guilty to something that they might have um, a really viable defense to, but the only way they can actually assert their defense is by staying in jail. Mm -hmm. When uh, people are released, and this has been the experience of um, the pilot program that has been um, underway in Queens since 2009 and in Manhattan for two years, when people are released, they're able to um, often mount a defense to the case or keep returning to court and the charges get dismissed or you end up with a better outcome than if they had waited in jail. So what do you think of the proposal? How does it sound to you being in the bail business yourself? I, you know, on many levels, you know, the bonding industry believes that, um, you know, that everyone should be able to obtain liberty. And we don't, and we don't prescribe to these numbers because all of these numbers are skewed. All these CJA numbers are old. Um, we are in the process of doing an independent study and you will see that the majority of people that are held incarcerated are there on various holds, um, immigration holds. There's no account for that in these CJA, you know, findings, if you will. And the majority of people that are um, arraigned and where a judge sees fit to set bail um, do get out of jail on a $1,000 bond. I mean, the bonding industry proved um, to the city and state of New York a few years ago when Littman floated his bill, that that is simply and utterly not true. We absolutely post $500 bonds and $1,000 bonds on a daily basis throughout the city of New York at a much reduced rate to the consumer, at no taxpayer expense whatsoever. Um, the bonding industry is not open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. We are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We use something that the city of New York could never have, and that's called the circle of love. In other words, grandma's coming in and bailing out little Johnny. Well, little Johnny might not be scared of the criminal justice system. He might not even be scared of Rikers Island, but clearly he's scared of his grandmother. So um, I know that Marika refers to us as money bail, but I beg to differ, because we have an ongoing relationship with the family members until the final disposition of that case. And I'd like to see any, any floated program um, move to say something like that. What do you think of the mayor's idea? Uh, well, I think it's a good start, but it, there are definitely problems with it, uh, one of which is that it only is going to cover a very small number of people, maybe 10 percent at most of those that sit in jail on bail they cannot pay. Um, so the pilot programs that Wendy referred to that were in existence from Queens starting in 2009 covered a total of 2,700 people. And um, this proposed program covers another 3,000, 3,400. So it doesn't reach enough people. And interestingly, in those pilot programs, they're only taking 22 percent in the Manhattan program, 7.9 percent of people who are eligible under that program are actually getting accepted into it. Mm -hmm. um, some other problems are concerns about over-supervising people, people who are low risk. Studies have shown that if they are over-supervised, they are actually at a higher risk for recidivism. Um, another concern is that judges might feel like they want to put people that they would normally have released with no bail into this supervised release program. And of course, this is all done before there's any determination of guilt. So in the Bronx, for example, a misdemeanor case often takes 500 plus days to resolve, and a person might be required to have weekly check-ins, programs, onerous conditions as a part of this pretrial services, where their ultimate case might be dismissed where their sentence, if one were ever imposed, if, if they were found guilty or pled guilty, might be a few days of community service. So it doesn't seem, it seems to look a lot more like a very, um, a sentence than just simply monitoring someone and making sure they're coming back to court. Wendy, it raises a good point, actually. A lot of our criminal courts see a big backlog of cases and a lot of delays. Is there any worry that this system will increase those, create more work for courtrooms, or is the opposite the idea? Um, I haven't heard that concern. Um, I think that you know, this is, the cases might take longer to be resolved because uh, people are not in jail, they don't 
they're not going to be pleading guilty just to get out of jail. So in that sense, there might be more court dates. And I mean, I have heard the concern that there are just too many, um, too many court dates in general for a lot of defendants. Every time they have a court date, they have to miss a day of work or they have to arrange child care or, you know, it's a, just going to court is in itself a disruption to people's lives. And so there is, um, there's, I think there's always a concern that the longer a case goes on, the you know, more disruptive it is. But um, the defense attorneys that I spoke with still said it's better to have that disruption to your life than to have someone in jail for Rikers Island, in Rikers Island, waiting for the case to be resolved. And Michelle, this is actually one, the mayor's idea is one of a couple proposals that are on the table for addressing That's bail. Right. Mm -hmm. um, his is to impose a new sort of supervisory regime, but there's another idea to actually pay bails. Can you talk about that and what you think of it? Well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, these bails are very low, and I think that people that are truly indigent don't belong lingering in any correctional institution because they simply and only can't make bail. I think that on a humane level, the commercial bail bond industry truly believes in that. And that's why we spend so much time with family members, you know, helping them. They can't uh, make the, the, the bond payment, so they come in, we give them a couple weeks. And, you know, this is why we work with the community. We've been vested in these communities for, you know, hundreds of years, like you said. So, I mean, we don't believe that anyone should linger in incarceration. But you know what? The fact of the matter is, if a judge feels that $500 is bail, I would say ROR the defendant. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You're costing the Department of Corrections a tremendous amount of money. You're costing, you know, the clerks have to do a tremendous amount of work. And, and in terms of what you asked Wendy, um, you know, I can tell you that, you know, the court system, the clerk's office especially, I mean, has to do a tremendous amount more work. And it's not like they're getting compensated or there's some sort of new division being created for this sort of thing. I mean, the fact of the matter is the onus will end up being on the Department of Corrections, the clerk's office, the, the court officers. They have to remand the defendant. If the defendant is only, if the judge says it's only a $250 bail, why set the bail? Let him go. Along those lines, with the pilot programs in Manhattan and Queens, um, businesses that you run or are in touch with, has there been any drop-off in volume for uh, bond agents, you know, near those courthouses as a result? Well, you know, NYPD is not exactly in a glorious relationship with our mayor. So um, the fact of the matter is, I mean, you know, quality of life crimes are not exactly being, there's not exactly a tremendous amount of policing going on right now because half the time, you know, cops arrest these people and the next thing you know, they're indicted. The next thing you know, the cop is arraigned. And then everybody's saying, oh, it's because he was, he was Latino or he, he's a black kid or whatever the case may be. I mean, I would, I would, uh, I would say, how about um, don't commit the crime? Well, let's actually, Rick, I want you to respond to that general idea. The bail problem, as we've described it, is really uh, the end of a focus on misdemeanor offenses, quality of life policing that, you know, really soared in the city in the 90s. Um, can we, if we want to solve that problem, address it by talking about bail, or does it really have to start with sort of law enforcement, policing strategies, that kind of thing? Are we, are we approaching this from the wrong end? I would say that both sides um, need to be looked at in a serious way, and that there's no doubt that certain communities are over-policed and brought into the criminal justice system in disproportionate and unfair numbers. But the result is where you have many people in jail who are low-income people of color being incarcerated on amounts of bail as low as $1,000, and where she's recognizing that bail that low really serves no purpose. Why are we setting bail in these amounts and keeping people in jail because of poverty? Uh, that really makes no sense. And I would just like to comment one thing on the on the commercial bail bond industry. There, it, there are fees, and those fees are non-refundable. So people are paying a price to be able to obtain their freedom. And for low-level bails, our clients generally are paying 30, 40, 50, 60 percent as the collateral, as well as the non-refundable fee fees. So where they can't make the full amount of, say, a $500 bail, they're going to an insurance company bond and paying $350. Uh, so it's, it's not, not a accurate. huge 
Well, that's from our client's experience. I can tell you that that is frequently the case. Well, I think that might be something we have to address online later. Thank you all so much for coming and uh, discussing this important topic.